I'm going to be digitizing a smiley face uh, using an outline fill as the yellow base color and I'll be using satin stitches for the outline, the eyes, and the mouth. And the purpose of this video is to use a lot of curved sections uh, both for the fill and for the details on the smiley face. So let's get started. I've already imported my artwork into the design view area and I've selected the control points in the design view tabs so that we can see what kind of button points we're using to digitize this design um, and I am going to select the Digimouse from the layer tabs at the top of the screen. There we go. And we'll begin by just going up to the very top of the design where we're going to begin digitizing the fill that makes up the yellow part of the face. And we'll start out with a very simple lockdown stitch which is going to consist of white buttons, another white button, another white button. Now I'm going to set the parameters for the fill I'll be using to make up the yellow part of the smiley face. And I'm going to go with a density of 0.38, um, a stitch length of 3.5 millimeters. I find it's best to use a fairly short stitch length uh, to create these outline fills. They lay down very nicely. Um, the stitch direction I'm going to keep at zero degrees. Okay, I find that many times these fills run with less distortion when you're using a stitch direction of zero degrees, which makes for a perfectly horizontal stitch in the fill. I am going to go ahead and select that the underlay will be on for this fill. It's a fairly large fill. And for the properties for the underlay, I am going to select a stitch direction of 90 degrees. So it's going to be perfectly perpendicular to the direction of the fill stitches that will sew over the underlay. Um, I will go with a density of 2.0 and a stitch length that matches the length of the fill that will sew over it which is 3.5 millimeters. Now I've already scaled the design. It's going to be about two and a half inches from top to bottom. And I'll go ahead and leave the color as red so that I will have some contrast with the artwork that I'm digitizing over. Now one of the first things I'm going to do is create some underlay uh, where the black part of the design is going to sew over the yellow, there will be certain areas that those stitches are going to pull open the fill. So I am going to set a very low density for my column stitches of 1.2. There we go. And we can go ahead and minimize all that. And let's get started. Now at the very top of the design, the outline stitches in black will probably pull open the fill that I'm going to sew underneath. So I will put some underlay column right at the very top of the design. Um, you'll notice that I'm using my zoom tool to go ahead and enlarge areas of the design that I'm working in. Uh, this will give you a greater ability to control the stitches that you're inputting. And the curved columns are a sequence of buttons that begin with a white. You continue with a blue. 
uh, the curved sections of your stitches are defined by green in the middle, green in the middle, and you can go ahead indefinitely with green buttons, green and green. Okay, and we'll just come down to the bottom here, and this is another area where these black stitches are going to pull open the fill. So I am just going to create some very low density underlay stitches here, beginning with a white. The second button in a curved column segment is a blue. The buttons that define the curve are green and green and you can finish out with two blues on the end or you can just continue with a green and a green. Here, let's take a look at what we've done so far. Very good. Let's do a little bit of editing to uh, tighten up these stitches that we've just inputted. And from the layer tabs at the top, I can select my zoom in tool and enlarge this area. Deselect the Digimouse and by just hovering over the button I can press and hold down my left mouse button and move the points where I want them to be. You probably don't need to do a huge amount of straightening out of these points because your artwork and your STI file that you digitize from that artwork is always going to be a little bit larger than the finished design. But just to show what you can do with the editing on the Stitch Pro STI software, we'll go ahead and straighten out a few more points here. There we go. And by using the scroll bars and my zoom tools up at the top of the layer tabs, we can enlarge certain areas of the design and move around the points to where they are just where we want them to be. And this shows you how you can use editing while you're digitizing. Okay, so um, we're at the bottom of the design and this is where I think I will begin the fill and we'll go ahead and select the Digimouse button from the top of the screen from the layer tabs and we can resume digitizing and a fill begins with a white green and another white and I'll come across at the very bottom with another white and here let me go back and have that artwork fill up the entire screen and for the curved side of the fill I will input another green button I'll come up at the very top and finish out that side of the fill with a white button and I'll come across here perfectly horizontal or as close to horizontal as I can get with another white button. For the side of the fill we'll use another green button to get that nice curved section and we'll finish that out at the bottom of the fill with a white button. And to end the fill, we use one blue button to end the inputting of the sides and another blue button to finish out the fill. Now the uh, fill is done, so we can go ahead and create a lockdown by using a very simple sequence of white buttons. Here's another white button and here's another white button and that will keep the uh, thread from unraveling on this fill when the uh, trimmers engage at the end of the color. 
Well, there, we have completed the yellow that makes up the smiley face. If we wanted to, we could go over to the Design View tab and select Stitch Points or Stitches to see how the design is going to look when it's stitched in. And that looks good to me. But we'll go ahead and deselect Stitch Points and uh, stitches so that we can continue digitizing. And before I move on to the next color, I'm going to come over here to the property view area and select appearance. And I am going to click on display color and go ahead and select yellow as being the color for that layer. There we go. Now let's go ahead and select a new layer. And that layer, it looks like the color is going to be light green, and that's good. I'll need some contrast uh, between the color on the screen and the uh, black of the artwork. So we will go ahead and leave that as it is. Now I will select the properties for column stitches in the property view area and just go ahead and check the density and I am seeing that that uh, is a 0.4 density, 0 0.40 millimeters and that will be a good density for a two and a half inch tall smiley face. So I'll go ahead and leave that as it is uh, the column width, I usually set a minimum value for these satin stitches at about 2%. Okay, there, we're good to go. We're, we're good to begin digitizing the details on this smiley face. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and come up to the very top of the design. And to begin the black stitches, I will go ahead and start with a very simple lockdown that consists of white stitches. White, 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 white. And just to provide a little bit of underlay for the border of this smiley face, I'm going to complete one lap underneath where the satin stitch will sew with some green buttons. Green, 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 green. And that's going to give you a curved running stitch all the way around the design. And now we can begin digitizing the satin stitch that will sew over that. We begin our column with a white button we continue with a blue button. For the curved sections of the column stitch, we'll use a green and a green. We'll go ahead and continue that with a green and a green. We'll go ahead and continue that with a green and a green and we'll finish the border around the smiley face with a green and another green button. Now we'll be moving down to do the eyes and the mouth of the smiley face. So let's finish up this border around the smiley face with a very simple lockdown of white stitches, of white buttons, white, white, white. And the purpose of a lockdown stitch is to keep the satin stitch from unraveling once the design is done.